Welcome to this week's edition of World Crisis Radio. This is Webster Tarpley speaking to you from Washington, D.C. Now, let me remind everyone right off the bat that uh, I will be making two appearances in Western Europe, uh, and these will be the only ones of the year, as far as I know, for what's left of the year. And uh, this involves, first of all, on Monday, the 26th of October, there will be a conference, an anti-NATO conference, under the heading No Guerra, No NATO. And that will be in Rome, Italy, at the Centro Convegni Cavour, the Cavour Conference Center, C-A-V-O-U-R. And that is in Via Cavour. So C-A-V-O-U-R, Via Cavour, 50A, Rome. And that will be from 10 o'clock in the morning until 6 o'clock in the evening. And uh, you can check uh, the various uh, web pages to see exactly who of those uh, invited is now uh, likely to appear. But I will appear for sure. And I hope that uh, friends and contacts in Italy and beyond who uh, find it convenient to get to Rome uh, come by, because what we'll do is improvise a uh, meeting of an informal meeting of friends and supporters of the Tax Wall Street Party and the United Front Against Austerity uh, somewhere on the margins of this conference. It, it might even turn out to be the day of. It could be lunch the day of or dinner the day of or maybe lunch or dinner or the afternoon of the day after, something like this. But there will be a gathering of, uh, of contact. So that's uh, Rome, October 26th. I'll repeat this later in the broadcast. And then uh, on uh, Halloween, right, October 31st, and November 1st, actually, I'll be speaking on November 1st, as far as I know, but uh, come and see what else is uh, available at this conference. Uh, this is Querdenken, Q-U-E-R-D-E-N-K-E-N. -E -E so it means uh, thinking out of the box, I would say, in, uh, in English, and that's at in Friedberg, F-R-I-E-D-B-E-R-G, close to Frankfurt am Main. So we're in the Rhein-Main area of Germany, right? You know, Mainz, Wiesbaden, Frankfurt, well, Friedberg. And that's up there near, what is it, Bad Nauheim, where Elvis Presley did his military service. But this is Friedberg. So uh, October 31st, November 1st, and you can find that under uh, Q-U-E-R hyphen D-E-N-K-E-N hyphen K-O-N-G-R-E-S-S dot D-E. Look that up on the Internet. You'll find these links, by the way, on my Twitter feed. That is to say Webster G. Tarpley. Go to Webster G. Tarpley. Go back a few days and you will find the lowdown on these conferences. So hope to see people on Monday the 26th in Rome, Italy, and then on uh, October 31st, November 1st in the uh, Frankfurt area of Germany. And the same thing goes for, for Frankfurt. We will hopefully have some kind of an informal meeting of uh, friends, sympathizers, contacts of the Tax Wall Street Party, United Front Against Austerity, and uh, with a view to, uh, to expanding operations in Europe. Because... Let everybody know this is an international movement. This is not limited to the United States. Uh, we don't need country by country organizations at this point. Uh, the point is precisely to have an international approach. In other words, learn the lesson of Greece. The Greeks have been temporarily defeated. And one of the big reasons was that they were organized on a Greeks only basis, one country at a time. It's a hopeless proposition. When your adversary, finance capital, is organized into Bilderberger, trilateral, three continents, uh, and so forth, and then when you're dealing with the, uh, what, the 18 countries of Euroland and the 29 countries, I think it is, of the European Union, uh, one country has no chance. 
And the point of that is you've got to do that from the word go. That's not something you can improvise at the end of a long process of, uh, of organize, organizing. You've got to have that built in from the very beginning. So that's what we propose to do. The idea is to have an international philosophical association, call that the United Front Against Austerity, and then articulate that into um, political expressions. But don't start dividing, subdividing at this early time, because it's way premature, and it sets you up for precisely the bad habits that the Greeks are paying for uh, so dearly, right? The fact that they were isolated, and in those European Council meetings, they really didn't have anybody that they could uh, could count on. Nobody was prepared to go go down the line uh, for them because, of course, they were not. They had not signified that they would do that for somebody else. It's always a two way street. But when you're dealing with finance capital, dear friends, they are organized internationally, and you better be organized internationally also. Narrow chauvinism gets you nothing except defeat. So. This morning, we're recording our program early because of the vicissitudes of this uh, trip. So we're, uh, we're coming to you now on uh, Thursday, the 22nd of October, and a little bit earlier in the day than usual. But we're still looking at lots and lots of um, clown show going on here. And right now, it's the Benghazi uh, Committee, the House Benghazi committee, right, run by Mr. Slickums, Trey Gowdy. I think the Trey is uh, French for very, uh, and I don't know what very we can put on this guy, but very intelligent he is not. Maybe very uh, unscrupulous would be would be uh, the case. Um, and we'll get to this in just a minute, but let's, let's just uh, point out a couple of things in the, in the really big picture. We're going to be heavy on domestic this time. I know some people like that, but let's get a little bit of international context. Remember now, we put out a warning last weekend, which was simply that Obama is losing power in his own administration. And uh, this is un undoubted. Uh, all of those security breaches, all of those drones and all kinds of other things have gone on so that... Uh, Essentially, the neocon faction and their close allies, the humanitarian bombers, both of them militaristic, aggressive, uh, and ultimately quite suicidal for the United States, they, they've been gaining power. So Obama's power, at least momentarily, waning. And then this, uh, this question of the neocons uh, getting more power. And when I say neocons, don't just think, you know, the Committee for a New American Century or something like this, right? It's not just some chicken hawk like William Crystal. We're talking General David Petraeus. We're talking John Allen, the hopefully now definitively outgoing ISIS czar who has uh, done so much damage, has set the stage for the current uh, difficulties by his phony war policy. Uh, all of that is, um, is uh, happening but we, uh, you know, we 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 want to fight back. Now, uh, the first thing is let's look at Assad in Moscow, uh, and that I think is a very interesting moment, right? It is, uh, as has been pointed out in much of the news, uh, a lot of uh, a lot of the you know stuff has been has been said about this Assad meeting, right? The New York Times is attempting to push this line that this was not a cooperative uh, conference. Here we go. Uh, Bashar al-Assad finds chilly embrace in Moscow, writes the New York Times, October 21st. We'll be right back on World Crisis Radio. Welcome back to World Radio. And as I mentioned in the first segment, if you are in Italy, please come to the No Guerra, No Nato conference in Rome, uh, via Cavour uh, in Rome, and that's on Monday, the 26th of October from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. I will be there, and we will have time either that day or the day after, I guess, to um, 
to put together a an informal gathering of supporters of the tax Wall Street Party, and then on to the Frankfurt area of Germany on Halloween weekend, October 31st, November 1st, that is in Friedberg for the Querdenken Congress. And that is thinking out of the box, thinking across the existing lines, I guess. Um, and we'll try to have a gathering of, uh, of various contacts there. And then, of course, other speakers, take a look at the, uh, the respective uh, websites of these. So uh, I'll, I'll repeat that again, but um, you can also find it on my Twitter feed. That is to say, Webster G. Tarpley. Now, Assad in Moscow. The first time Assad has left Syria, as far as we know, uh, and that would be in um, what since uh, the early spring of 2011. So it's uh, four or five years. But finally, he went to meet with Putin in the Kremlin. And I would say uh, there's every indication that this was a productive and uh, harmonious uh, meeting. They have every reason to be uh, optimistic because, of course, the combined operation, that is the Syrian Arab army on the ground, backed up by Hezbollah, backed up by Iran, is gaining the terrorist rebels controlled by the CIA. <laughs> And we're, I was laughing again yesterday at CNN about the moderate rebels. They were looking for moderate rebels, right? Who was the guy who went around looking for the honest man? Was it Diogenes looking for an honest man? Uh, you're going to look until your life is over to find a moderate terrorist rebel. Or better yet, there are uh, moderate opposition forces in Syria. They are represented in the parliament. They're not out in the field with a Kalashnikov they're sitting in Damascus in the parliament and trying to keep uh, law and order and the Syrian uh, government going. So uh, uh, all of that uh, it doesn't uh, matter to CNN. So uh, the idea now is Assad goes to Moscow in an atmosphere of optimism, of success, Syrian Arab army, Hezbollah, Iran on the ground with Russian air cover. Notice that with a relatively modest fleet of planes, what is it, 40 or 50, they're able to generate 60, 70, 80 sorties per day. And the wretched policy of John Allen, the ISIS czar, had limited the United States to five to 10, and half of those came back with the bombs still uh, not uh, jettisoned uh, along the way or dropped on a target. So that's really wretched. And it also points out how easy this is. In other words, if you could just close that Turkish-Syrian border, you shut that, you clobber the ISIS people from the air, the Syria, uh, Syrian Arab army and the auxiliaries go in, they mop up, and it's done. ISIS is a paper tiger. ISIS is not even the junior varsity. It's the intramural teams, right? The interclub or interfraternity athletics. That's who they are. They're pathetic. They are a paper tiger. So uh, there was a big piece of low-hanging fruit available for some smart person. The United States, of course, couldn't because of the obsession by Petraeus coming out of the Anbar awakening and the Sunni awakening uh, 10 years ago almost. They couldn't do that because they wanted to keep ISIS as a CIA secret army. Uh, but uh, in effect, the... Uh, the, the weakness was there. So somebody came along, and that was a smart guy called Putin. So he did uh, come along. So now the New York Times, the, the, the entire uh, tone of the U.S. coverage of the Assad-Putin meeting is sour grapes. Man, are they envious and bitter and consumed by their own treachery. So the New York Times, Bashar al-Assad finds chilly embrace in Moscow trip by Stephen Lee Myers and Anne Barnard. These these people are now contending for the Goebbels Prize uh, of the week, October 21st, 2015. And what do we find here? A whole article about how chilly the atmosphere was, uh, which is based on nothing, nothing except U.S. think tank reports. Here we go. Typical paragraph. New York Times. By all accounts, 
The two leaders remain distant and wary of each other. The Kremlin in particular 